Hey, still remember me? Old guy, used to hang around these parts, scribbling about basketball and, as the intro goes, anything I wanted to talk about. There is a 50-50 to 50 chance both Kyle Lowry, Left, and DeMar DeRozan are on the Raptors roster at the start of training camp next season, says Doug Smith, Frank Gunn, the Canadian press, well, a scant two and a half months after a tough night in the old gym and a few scars and blips along the way, the good doctors and sawbones have cleared the path for a return. It won't be all time, at least for the time being. We're going to shoot for three days a week at the moment, maybe four if things perk up with days to be determined by what's going on, when news breaks and what my responsibilities are to the paper, the website and, yeah, the readers. So it's a bit uncharted but believe me, it's good for the soul to be re-engaged. Article continued Bella Wand with Miami Beach on the mind, away we go, I wasn't at all surprised by the lack of Raptors activity around the draft on Thursday night, seemed to be no need to blow a few million on buying a second round pick and the fact no active players were involved in any draft night transactions would indicate what the rest of the league was feeling on the night. So it unfolded as it did, entirely uneventful here and I felt bad for the colleagues likely bored to tears in the workroom. At least I had the fridge and a supply of fudgesicles to get help. This no sodium thing takes potato chips off the table and that sucks. I could switch the channel and catch up later if need be. But I have a feeling those boring days may not last all that long around these parts. The spidey senses are tingling more than any other time in the era of Messiah and I can absolutely see some big-time transaction coming to fruition between now and the July 6th lifting of the free agent signing moratorium. Article continued Bell if it's one thing to change the coach, and I'm still not on board with that even though I understand in some ways why it happened, but I also think there have to be corresponding roster moves, too. Get today's top sports stories in your inbox, or headlines from the Star's award-winning sports journalists, sign up for our daily sports newsletter. I think Masai knows that, I imagine Bobby Webster knows that and for the first time, I think substantial trades are, and should be, on the horizon. It might be one of the all-stars, I put it at 50-50 to 50 that both Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan are on the roster at training camp's opening, or it might be Serge Ibaka or Jonas Valanciunas but I can see a big, bold move coming. It won't be easy. The front office doesn't have a lot of sweeteners at its disposal to tack on to trades, extra picks they can package as need be like they did to get out from under the DeMar Carroll deal. So there would be a couple of options, tack on one of the promising, and relatively cheap, young players in any bigger deal or take back toxic long-term money. Neither is a perfect solution and until specifics become available I can't guess which would be less painful, but it strikes me as necessary that something significant happens this summer more than any other. Yeah, Thursday night was mind-numbingly boring locally, I don't imagine the next few weeks will be, so, do I spend the rest of the day watching soccer and relaxing or working on a mock pucks draft, one of The reasons I was hoping to get the typing shackles off around this time is that it's international season and the Canadian senior men and, more important, this summer, the women are gearing up. The men didn't get all the players they expected or wanted or originally announced as possible but it's a solid crew that's in Vancouver and Victoria this weekend to play China before heading to Toronto and Ottawa next weekend for significant World Cup qualifiers against Dominican Republic and US. Virgin Islands. It's a convoluted qualification process spread out over about 18 months and lots can transpire with the men. But suffice to say the two home games next week are almost must-win outings. With first-round records carrying over, a loss to Doctor already in the books and tough South American competition looming in the second phase, they cannot afford to spit up one of their home dates. The toughest one would figure to be the Dominican Republic here in Toronto on Friday.
It's huge that the majority of the group will have this weekend's friendlies out west under their belts. The women, they are underway at their Edmonton home base, they have an extensive summer schedule that includes three games at home against Turkey to get ready for September's World Championships in Spain. There will be ample time for me to catch up with them but if you wanted to start learning about them now, that'd be a good idea, alright, this has been entirely therapeutic and I'm glad to be back even on a limited basis. We are definitely not all the way back but we are well on the way on the long journey. I need to once again thank everyone for the weekly e-cards, emails, texts and calls. I'll never be able to quite explain how much they helped. Enjoy the weekend, talk to you the first of next week. Doug Smith is a sports reporter based in Toronto. Follow him on Twitter, at SmithReps.